Hi! Welcome again to another video. Now, this one is going to be a bit different from my previous ones because I'm going to show you how to do a little bit of watercoloring. But we're still going to apply this on our journals. So, this was supposedly for last month's theme because every July it's World Watercolor Month. So basically there's just a prompt every day and you just follow along by painting those. Um, but in my case, I just paint whatever it is that I feel and I try not to be so hard on myself so I just paint whenever I can. Technically, I plan my own theme for World Watercolor Month. However, this time I told myself to just try different things, especially subjects that I feel uncomfortable with. Now, I also got this watercolor journal from Paper and Chai, um, a local maker from Cebu. And I want to test this sketchbook, so that's why I just want to play with different subjects and somewhat different medium as well. And then I was researching for my sticker theme this coming August. And for some reason, the word fruitful just kept calling me. And I think that's because I came across a Bible verse from John that says, if you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. And because of that, I'm just researching about different tropical fruits and what color theme that will go along together. And this will also be one of the elements for the sticker update this August. And even though I'm a few days late from the World Watercolor Month, and this is not my usual videos, um, I just thought I want to share this process as well, thinking you might be inspired to do this and at the same time you can apply this on your journals too. So what's happening here is I'm just forming the shape of the fruit in this case. Um, we are painting kiwi and I'm just using a watercolor brush to form the shape. Um, like the circle for the open kiwi and oval for the whole one at the back. Now, if you want to do this as well, by all means, you can use pencils just so you'll have a guide where to color your fruit. I would also like to apologize for the angle of the video here. I did not realize how low my sketchbook is that you can hardly see what's happening at the bottom. Anyway, I'm going to show you another kiwi fruit later. So this one will be just one of the drawings or the paintings that we'll be doing. So the trick with watercolor is try to leave white space. So you're not actually coloring the entire shape of the fruit. So make sure you're leaving white space so it will create highlights. Then you can just paint your fruit with a light wash meaning more water than the pigment just so to get the light color of your subject now once it's dry that's the time that you can add more pigment so you put more pigment rather than water then just layer it on top of the fruit so here i am painting another kiwi as you can see, I am just forming the kiwi with the watercolor brush. It doesn't matter if you can paint or draw a perfect circle, you can just adjust it. Plus, fruits and other subjects like flowers are really not perfect, so don't worry about that. Now here, you can see me dubbing the brush paint just so I can leave more white space. And in case you forgot to leave white space, just use a tissue to lift the color. So just dab the tissue on the area that you want to um, remove the paint. This only applies once the paint is still wet. Um, you can also do this by adding water on the paint. However, if the paint is already dry and you try lifting it up by just re-wetting it, it will already stain the paper. 
Now, while we're waiting for the kiwi fruit to dry, let's paint another fruit. Now, this one is passion fruit, which is also included uh, in the sticker sheet that I'll be updating this month. Now, one thing about watercolor is you really have to be patient when it comes to layering your colors because if you keep on adding on your subject, even though the first layer is still wet, you're gonna end up having muddy color instead of having contrast or different shades. If you wanna speed up the process of drying, you can use heat gun or blower. Although blower can give you a low heat and longer time to dry, but it will help still. If you'll notice, this is just a very loose style of painting watercolor. Now, um, this is a good way if you want to warm up your hands or you want to get to know your paints and the strokes or how hard and light can you handle the brush strokes and at the same time how you can mix your colors. So here I'm just doing the same process with the kiwi. I'm forming the shape of the passion fruit using just the brush. But if you really want to use pencil, if you're not yet comfortable with the loose brush strokes, then just feel free to use pencil. So this time, I want to add leaves with the passion fruit. And I'm just dubbing the paint and trying not to come close to the passion fruit because it is still wet. So as you can see, once you, once your brush get closer to the wet paint, it will just add to your um, leaves. If that happens, just try to remove the color using your paint or if not, you can use the tissue to lift or to remove the paint as well. Now here, I'm just adding another layer since um, I find the leaves already a bit dry or moist and went back to the passion fruit again because it's already dry. If you're not comfortable with how you mix the watercolor still, you can just look for a darker shade closer to the color that you've used and then you can just put um, water to that and that will give you a little contrast from your color or from your previous color. From here, it's just pretty much the same. I just kept on adding more layers on top of it. And so I'm just gonna leave you for a while and watch to concentrate how to paint fruits. Okay, so that's how you add layers on your watercolor fruit. Now let's add details by adding ink. So here I'm using Pilot Kakuno fountain pen in extra fine nib. Um, I'm also using the color blue refill cartridge from Pilot as well. And later on, I realized that the Pilot um, mixable refill cartridge is not waterproof so if in case you're using the same pen make sure that your ink is waterproof so just in case that you want to add more color on top of your ink you can still add or you can still do so without smudging the ink 
because with this one when i tried adding more colors on top of the ink what happened was it just smudged the ink although it gives you an extra dimension or like it gives you an accident shadow for your painting but nonetheless i would say like a clean style inking now if you don't have a fountain pen the other option that you can use are dip pens now if you're into calligraphy or if you have those kinds of pens you can use that as well now what's nice about that most of the calligraphy pen are waterproof so you'll be safe when you use that with watercolor now if you don't have those two the other option that you can use are gel pens or if you have fine liners or drawing pens that's another option that you can use for this one here i am just adding extra details just like um, dots and cross hatching to create shadows and depth for the watercolor fruit i also added few lines for the leaves um, to create more details one thing to take note though, if you want to add ink to your watercolor, just make sure that your watercolor is already dry before adding those details. So now that we're done warming up with our watercolor, let's try applying it on our journal. Now, if you're doing this on your journal, you have to consider or take note that this is not a watercolor paper. So there are some journals that are too thin that cannot handle too much water. So if so, just make sure to add or to lessen your water and use more pigments. Otherwise, it will create a lot of bleed at the back of your page or more so, it will create a hole which we do not want to happen. Here, I'm using my very own artisan papery pandagdag journal. Now, I've seen some of my friends who bought the journal as well and tried watercolor on it. Now, this is my first time to do it on my journal like use watercolor and i was really happy that it can handle a lot of water um so if you're into watercolor and yet you want to carry your usual journal just like mine this i can tell you can still be possible if you want to add watercolor on it although there's bleeding at the back but it will vary how much water that you will add but nonetheless it will not make a hole on your page but it will also make it warp which is also gives an extra personality to your journal so here i'm just using the same fountain pen as we did with the sketchbook and i really like how this turned out um, this is my first time to actually do a watercolor element on my journal I normally use photos or ephemeras or if not, I like just simply drawing with um, fine liners or drawing pens. But as I'm doing this, I just realized I can just also add watercolor instead of photos and quite excited to try this kind of style in journaling. And this is how I'm going to end this video. I hope you enjoyed this and would also like to see if you tried this one on your journal. Alright, see you again on my next video. Bye!